Hey, hey guys, welcome back here for a, another Photoshop tutorial. In this one, we're going over how to create torn or ripped paper. You can see on the edges here how it looks like this has been ripped. Now, the thing about this one is the the more time you put into it, the more realistic of an effect you're going to get. And we're going to create this completely from scratch. Uh, one of the things you can use this for is that I made an example ad here that uh, I, I actually use this ad. It's not an example, but I use this ad for one of my clients and kind of made it with this ripped paper look like the gift wrap was opening up so uh, let's go ahead and turn these off and we'll go ahead and jump right into the tutorial Okay, so we're back here in Photoshop. So I'm, what I want to do is I want to create a new layer. And uh, first what I want to do is I want to fill this layer. Now if I turn this background layer off, you can see that there's nothing here. I want to show you a quick trick. If I, on this layer, whatever my foreground color is here, if I use X, I can switch those back and forth. Whatever that color is, I can fill this by using Alt and Backspace. That'll automatically fill it. So a uh, little shortcut to get that filled. Now when we got that filled, we want to create a new shape. We're just going to use the rectangle tool and we're going to create a new rectangle on here and we'll just make it about this big and um, we're going to make it a little bit smaller than the canvas. Uh, now all we have to do since we can't see it is we can actually fill that if we want to fill that shape so that we can see how big it is and everything but we're going to actually want it white after this. So let's go ahead and get our shape first of what we want it to look like. Um, what we can do is turn this back to uh, white let's switch our foreground color and turn it back to white then we're going to go up to filter but before let's make sure this is a smart object if it's not convert to smart object make sure you've got that icon filter and then noise and add noise now what that does is going to add noise to the layer and we can move this up or down to add more noise we wanted about 12 uh 12.5 12 is fine um and we can have uniform or Gaussian. I typically go for the Gaussian. It looks like it has a little bit more depth most of the time. I like that look. And we definitely want monochromatic. If that's off, you're going to have colors. And we want only black and white for paper. And we're going to click OK. Now, since it's a smart object, we've got this noise filter we can turn off and on. So if we disable that, if it's not a smart object, you won't have that option. Um, now we're going to go up to filter, blur, and add an even more of a Gaussian blur. Um, which we wanted about 0.4 and that's just going to give it a little bit more realistic effect so now click OK and what we're going to do here is we're going to cut out a quick little shape of what we would we would think of torn paper to look like so let's open up our marquee tool with M and we're going to cut this off to make a quick sharp edge uh, right here and then we're going to use our lasso tool and we're going to hold alt because we're going to remove the piece that we actually want to tear out so we're going to remove this around and we're going to come down here just like this. It's a random shape that whatever it looked like that we'd cut our, or rip our paper. We're going to come down here. And as we come back around here, when we get about right here, we can just let go of the mouse and it's automatically going to close that path off. Now that we've got this cut out, we can right click and go to layer of the year copy. And that's going to give us a new layer with our cutout. So let's go ahead and minimize this. And now that we've got this, we're starting to get a little rough of a look. But if you zoom in here, it just doesn't, it's really sharp of a cut. So we want to kind of soften that. And we can do that by using the brush tool. Um, so let's go ahead and hit B. Now, when you've got your brush tool selected, before I show you everything to use, if you're on a regular brush tool, you can use Alt and right click to size your brush out. Uh, you can also just right click and that will bring up your little brush menu options here um, and allow you to pick what type of brush you want. So we're going to go to this 24 pixel uh, brush size and it's called spatter and then we're just going to click off of that to go back here and we're going to add a layer mask and let's go ahead and name this paper and we're going to add a layer mask to uh, so that the edits that we make actually go onto the layer mask and it doesn't destroy the layer. So if I disable this layer mask you can see that's still the original layer so let's go ahead and uh, we'll delete it and we'll create a new one and now that we've got this spatter brush we're going to start roughing this up now one thing you can do if you just want to do this real quick and you don't want to take too much time is you can use this spatter brush go to your uh, layer mask and then just start sporadically moving your brush back and forth and going just kind of like this all the way down uh, that might have been a little bit too much here but now if we zoom out we can see it's a little bit more of a rough effect 
Um, but we want to save a little bit of time. So we can do that by opening our brush uh, window, either by going to Window and Brush, or we can use F5, and it'll bring up all of our brush. You can set presets in here, and you can change your brush around. So what we have right now is just this kind of smooth-looking brush. I want to rough it up to make it look more like paper. So let's check the shape dynamics, and we're going to take this size jitter. You can either hover over the words or click this, and we're going to take it all the way up to 100%. Now notice that this changes what our brush looks like. So if we, um, if we had this up, Let's go back to my brush tool. There we go. And now if we move this on the layer mask, we need to make sure that we have a black uh, foreground layer to remove from the layer mask. So you see we can just drag through here instead of having to shake it back and forth um, and it gives us even more of a rough look. So if I just drag it through here, you can see that. All right, now if I were to take this size jitter down, look at the difference when I drag this. So it looks a little, a little weird. <laughs> So let's take size jitter all the way up. We're also gonna take the angle jitter. Notice around here what happens when I take the angle jitter up. It's gonna make it a little bit more dynamic and at random angles. So now if I were to take this, you can see it looks even more rough. So let's undo. So you should have your size jitter all the way up, your angle jitter around 20% or so, and then we're gonna minimize this and we're going to set the size of our brush we're gonna take it down to about uh, less than 20. So about, let's do 17. And then we're gonna start going around here and making it a little rough. So I wanna zoom in on this so I can make it as accurate as I can. And you don't really notice much of a difference. If you wanna actually see more of what you're doing, you can add the drop shadow to your layer. And I went ahead and configured this already, but we wanna, Kind of zoom out and see, let's undo that. What we want to do is zoom out and then you can add your drop shadow. That way you can see the effect that you're, you're going for. You can see, so now it's getting even more realistic and this just looks awful. So let's um, adjust the opacity a little bit here. Maybe we'll take it up to about 50%. Uh, the distance, you can move it back and forth. Just want a little subtle distance here. So maybe, you know, three or four is all you need. Um, and then your angle, you wanna make sure that you're not going on the outside. You can take it up here to about 135 to give it, to make it look like it's coming from the bottom right um, for your angle. Now, if you move it here, you can see that you could get a little bit of different of effect depending on where you would be looking at this piece of paper. So I'm gonna leave it on about 135 right there. Leave the distance, I've got mine at three. Uh, that looks pretty good. And then you can adjust the opacity on however dark you want the, the drop shadow. So let's go back down about 50, I got on 58, but that's close enough. We're gonna click okay. Now when you come back through here, we can get all of these um, out. So we wanna make sure we clear that off. And we're gonna go through here and just move this around. And if you mess up, you can just use Control Z. Um, but just to come down here and give us that rough effect. Now if you, if you get impatient and you want to make your brush bigger, this is what's going to happen. You're going to get all these weird spatter marks up here. So I just suggest to take your time and keep your diameter low, about 20 or lower. And then just come through here and we're going to make these adjustments all the way around the side and get more of this dimension on the paper. Now remember what I was saying about taking your time with this. The more time you take, the better you're gonna make this look. And I'm gonna show you some ways that we're actually gonna get even more dimension to our paper after we go through here. Uh, just about finished, it won't take too much time. And you wanna make sure you get all these little um, excess areas that the brush will leave behind. And the advantage to setting the shape dynamics is that you can just drag here versus having to go up and down here. Um, although we're gonna be doing that here in just a second. So now if you see here, we've got more of a realistic effect on the paper, but it still looks like it could be worked with um, if we wanna go through here and make it even more realistic. So two things and then we'll be done. Um, what you wanna do is change your opacity to your brush and take it way down, maybe about 25% or so, and then go over these areas that you've already gone over because if when you rip a piece of paper, it's kinda of in layers. So now you can see that you've even added more dimension to that. So be sporadic on this, maybe go in a little bit further uh, and then out to the edge go around. You can even do this in varying levels of opacity. So maybe you want to take your opacity to 50% and maybe you want to take it to, you know, 20% and 
do even more. So we've got this, uh, it's looking a lot better now. So now if we zoom out, you can see it's really starting to look like torn paper. It looks like it's got some depth and looks even better. Last thing, um, to make this even better, you can go to your smudge tool and then make sure your uh, brush is really, really small, like four, two, three, or four. And then to get really precise, you wanna go in and start smudging certain areas of the paper. So notice this gives us like these little pointed marks. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna smudge it out and then I'm gonna zoom out to show you what it looks like. So you just kinda wanna be really sporadic. Maybe go up and down, back and forth. So now if we zoom out, that gives us even more dimension on our ripped paper effect. So that's it for this tutorial. That is uh, torn paper, ripped paper completely from scratch to help you get that dynamic effect. This is really good just for using it in all kinds of different ways. Um, you see this all over the internet. So take your time with this, make it look real. Then you can even save this and reuse it in your projects. And if you've got all the effects on here and you've got it as a smart object, you can even resize it and make it look better. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe if you like the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.